Hello and welcome to the Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host Eileen and on this week's program, guest Lucinda Lavelli, Dean of the UF College of the Arts with esteemed colleagues, reflects on her amazing 12-year tenure as leader of the college and its rich, culturally diverse programming. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for our program. I am pleased to celebrate the UF College of the Arts during the tenure of Dean Lucinda Lavelli. And I'm pleased to have as my guest, Lucinda Lavelli, Dean of the UF College of the Arts, and to introduce Dr. Jerry Dickey, professor and director of School of Theater and Dance. And it's wonderful to have you both here. And uh, when I say tenure, uh, Dean Lavelli, we're talking about 12 years of uh, leading the UF College of the Arts in many, many positive ways. So that means you started when? Yes, I started in 2006 and I'm concluding this year and I've seen so many wonderful and exceptional happenings in the college, uh, work that we've created, scholarship that we've presented, but this year was exceptional because we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Constance Theater. And it was Jerry, exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to tell us a little more about that? Uh, I'd love to. You know, the, this was a wonderful event that happened in November. The Constance Theater turned 50 years old and uh, it was built in 1967 as part of the J. Wayne Wright Student Union Complex. Right. And within a couple of years after its opening, it came under the management of the then Department of Theater. So for the Constance 50th, we invited back a lot of alumni who were there for the opening season. They came back and joined us for a reception and a performance of the musical Kiss Me Kate. Yes. And in doing some research about the Constance 50th, it just struck me how significant that building has been in the cultural climate and history of Gainesville. I agree. Because as it developed in 1967, that was about the same time as the dance company that became Dance Alive was formed, right. the symphony orchestra came into existence, and the Constance Theater was the incubator really for the founders of the Hippodrome Theater. So it's really so deeply can, embedded in right. our, our it, it was life. It was a launching point. I was privileged and thrilled to be at that event, and, and you're right. I came away going, I didn't know all of this history, and I was living in Gainesville then, you know, so it was growing up here. So. Um, it, it, it was a good understanding and that sort of just takes us again so many accomplishments throughout this year and milestones but then we always turn a corner and say what's coming up next and there's a lot coming up and I applaud uh, both of you and the, the School of Theater and Dance for the collaboration with the Hippodrome and yes. many other parts of this community and you're continuing that. We are, and that, that partnership is something that Dean Lavelli was very supportive of and encouraging of when we first explored that. So each year the School of Theatre and Dance partners with the Hippodrome Theatre on a co-production. This year we're doing a new play uh, called The Wolves by Sarah DeLapp, 
It's a marvelous play, an insider's look at a young woman's club soccer team. So it's an all-female <laughs> cast. Oh, Canada, we love this. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for young actresses, and uh, we're very excited. It's going to be directed by Lauren Caldwell. It'll be opening the end of August, and will run through September. Okay, I'll, I'll be there in my seat, but I again, I think it's a great opportunity for the students the, in the master's program. I know you're a graduate of this theater program here. I was an undergraduate student in the Department of Theater at the University of Florida from 1974 to 1978. So when I had an opportunity to come back as the director of the school in 2012, it was a very special homecoming. Um, and I was, I've been so pleased with all the opportunities that I've been afforded since I've been back. Oh, since Jerry's been here, the dance program really has grown since he was an undergrad and during his time here we've had a really exciting summer program that he's nurtured that we call Swamp Dance and that will have some performances later this summer. Right, and then looking ahead, a big blockbuster musical, Lucinda, Hairspray? Yes. And uh, we love that because not only do we have our wonderful actors and dancers, but we have singers. And in a way, um, we have a unique, wonderful opportunity that our singers join us from the School of Music. So we have a really full range of voices that come to the stage. But we also have something special coming this fall. What is that, Jerry? We are welcoming back another alum, LaVon Fisher-Wilson. Oh who Dynamite. is a star of uh, Broadway productions and national tours, and she'll be rejoining us, uh, appearing in the performance of Hairspray in the role of Motormouth Mabel. Oh. So it's going to be a special treat for uh, those who have seen LaVon here when she was a student yes. some years ago. And uh, of course she was back on campus last year as part of the Capitol That's campaign. That's when I, I heard her perform. and Tremendous she Tremendous talent. Yes, incredible. I look forward to that production. Well, and some members of our audience may have seen her on Broadway. That's right. So it, and, and we're almost out of time, but uh, thank you, uh, Jerry, for your direction for the School of Theater and Dance and your strong collaboration for, for both of you. We all benefit. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back talking about UF College of the Arts with Dean Lucinda Lavelli, and I'm pleased to introduce Julia Morris Rowe, Associate Professor of Drawing and Painting, School of Art and Art History. And thank you for joining us, Julia. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, it is wonderful to talk about all the things that are happening in art at the UF College of the Arts and to focus on something, Lucinda, that was very important to you and still is, um, going back to 2010, the beginning of Creative Summer B. How did that evolve? Well, the provost realized that there were so many rich opportunities, both in the college and with the um, arts organizations and cultural organizations on the Cultural Plaza, um, that our 
not quite as active in the summer as they are during the school year. So he was looking for a way to allow the students and the community to still enjoy them. And so programming has evolved that crosses over from all the disciplines in the college as well as the Natural History Museum. And you'll notice there that they have a, um, a film series in the month of July each summer right. that supports their major exhibition. And this year it has to do with bats. So of course they're going to be having films with Batman <laughs> and it's totally mm -hmm. free each time every Friday night. The house is just filled with people loving the B-roll movies that they bring in. Yeah, we, I've gone, it's fun. <laughs> and we also have art exhibitions at the right. barn, and we've had different things at the University of Florida Performing Arts Center during the different years as well. This summer we're also going to have two concerts that are free, orchestra and wind concert and we also will have a dance concert and plays so you're going to see a whole range of activities most of them are free and open to the public and it really shows you that the arts are alive all year long here yes. in the city and e on the campus even in the hot summer now one of the highlights um, is our public art and we happen to have our public artist from last summer and this summer julia morris -Rowe. and julia could you tell us about the public art well Last summer I did the first part of a two-part mural project on the water reclamation tank on campus called Currents of Data. And that is a large mural designed specifically for the walking path around the water reclamation t uh, tank as people walk from the parking lot to the engineering, nursing, and other science buildings right. that are on the other side of it. And so this summer I'll be painting the front face, so that's in my mind more for car traffic, um, that's going to be a waterfall of data. So connecting the wow. ideas of the research on campus and our um, watershed and all the research that connects with the watershed and the springs in our region. Now can you tell me how easy is it to paint a mural on <laughs> I don't a water think, tank? I don't think it's easy. <laughs> how long it's, does it take? <laughs> um, the first one took about 14 days and we had three levels of scaffolding so I and my two assistants Laura Denzer and Laura North were climbing up and down those three oh levels boy. for two weeks. Um, in, in the hot sun with the heat reflecting off of the water tank. So it was pretty demanding physically, but really exciting because we had so many opportunities to talk to people right. as we were painting. And they must, were, the dialogue must have been great because people was, were going, what is happening here? They were thanking us for putting something beautiful in their space. Right. They were so excited that not look at that tank. <laughs> <laughs> but, but bringing, like you said, bringing art to them in unexpected places. Right. So that art is all around us and part of us and Just enriching us. Just like in the city us. of Gainesville. And yes. even the parking lot has murals now in the city of Gainesville. Right, so the new Gainesville Urban Art Initiative just completed about 20 or so murals in the parking lot downtown, uh, parking garage, sorry. And then I'm also on the curatorial board for the 352 Murals Project, and we're hoping to have some new murals starting up in the fall. So this is really another example of bringing the community and the campus closer together Absolutely. through art, when, one of your aims in your 12 years as Dean, and it, it is working, it is happening. I know that, that everyone feels positive because we, the community, benefits. And we're almost out of time, Julia. Would you like to add a few more thoughts? Well, one of the great things to me about working on public art projects is that dynamic that happens between you and people as you're working. But another component of the Creative Bee project is that I work with the engineering students and the art students and have them do a collaborative project. And so that's an opportunity to see two different populations with different skill sets come together and make something new. And that's a really exciting component, too. What art is all about. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Julia, for all you're doing, and Lucinda, for your uh, very, very welcomed leadership. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
We're talking about UF College of the Arts. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Kevin Orr, Director of School of Music, and Professor Jay Watkins, Director Gator Band. And Jay and Kevin, it's wonderful to have you both here because the School of Music is just a powerful part of the college. Thank you. Privilege to be here. Oh, well, it's, it's my privilege because I was there to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the School of Music, and that is an accomplishment to be very proud of. Yeah, I think we, my colleagues and I, feel it's one of, the, one of our proudest moments, one of the most exciting things that we've been part of uh, in, our, in recent memory. It's a lot of the product of a lot of planning. Oh, um, it showed, yes. But it just involved such a broad cross-section of who we are in the school, 12 different ensembles, uh, from the smallest chamber music ensembles to our largest ensembles, the symphony orchestra, the wind symphony, the marching band, the opera, uh, the, the steel drum ensemble, the Brazilian music ensemble, the jazz ensemble, we, we had it all there. You truly, and it was a wonderful concert because, it, you know, it showed the breadth and the depth, just what you're saying, of the School of Music, and it was a free concert. Free as is, is, is the tradition in the School of exactly. Music. The concert was free and open to the public, and, uh, and it gave us also a wonderful opportunity to engage with our retired faculty uh, who came to the event, we recognized them, we had wonderful video, yes. uh, videos of them speaking about their fond memories of the program and recognized them in reception. We had a fantastic slideshow. I loved it, that, yes. That showed images back into the 1940s uh, of who the school was and who we've become. Right, I mean, and that, you could see, took a lot of work. And you already did mention the Gator Band, and I have to say, when they took the stage and filled up all the aisles of the Phillips Center, it was a wow moment. You know, it, it was and a big have, moment. It was a big moment, and they have their own uh, history of how many years now, Jay? This is the we just finished the 105th year wow. of uh, the the band program at the University of Florida. So it's been a congratulations. Again, well, thank you. That yes. is... Um, I look pretty good for being 105. <laughs> I but was going to say, no, pride in the uh, sunshine. Yes, the pride of the sunshine, been... the sound of the Gator Nation. Yes. They've been, uh, the whole band program, really oh. going strong for 105 years. And, and again, a great way to integrate students from all across campus. It does. All of our ensembles in the School of Music are open to every student on campus. So we have a great cross-section of the student body. Uh, in all of our School of Music programs. So that just really is, is part of the whole vision of Dean Lavelli, just the uh, multi-interdisciplinary approach because you're bringing them all in through music. Right, it's a great way to connect with, yeah. with students from every major on campus, which is uh, wonderful. And, and Dean Lavelli's help uh, to the programs has been spectacular. Very she was valuable. very influential in helping us with the the Gator Band participating in the 2012 London Olympics. I remember that, yes. And now, of course, something wonderful has just occurred for the band. Yes, Tell we us. just uh, recently broke ground on the new Gator Band practice facility. So after 105 years, we're going to have our own home <laughs> yes. on campus. Uh, and that process has gotten started with uh, the generous support of the president and the provost, especially, and uh, the athletic department. And so we're, we're looking forward to getting phase one of that completed sometime this fall. And then uh, with the help of some donors, uh, hopefully getting phase two right. completed in the near future. That is quite excited. I mean, it, you so deserve it long overdue, we all know that, but just so much, you know, good feelings about that. And more newness for the School of Music because you're about to have a new location. We are. We're so excited to, to be now hearing regularly from our university president uh, through his support, through the support of Senator Perry, Keith Perry, uh, that a new music building uh, is going to be a reality very soon. Yeah. We've got a fantastic uh, location uh, right. where we understand we'll be at the corner of University and 13th. And potential, yes. potential there for the School of Music, which is maybe the the unit on campus that interfaces with the community exactly as much as anyone mm -hmm. and, and how many concerts throughout right. the year free about, concerts about 300 concerts wow. almost all of which are free to the public yes but this will give us an opportunity to actually 
invite the public to our facility with parking opportunities, with with uh, without with some space, of the challenges yes. that they have getting to us now in the center of campus. Being on the edge mm -hmm. will be uh, will open completely new opportunities yes. for interfacing with the community. I agree, and I look forward to all that that will be ahead for the School of Music. And thank you both for your leadership. Pleasure. Oh, Thanks so much, Ellie. Certainly. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back talking about UF College of the Arts with Dean Lucinda Lavelli and Jill Sonke, Director, the Center for Arts in Medicine. And it's good to have you join us again, Lucinda, and welcome to you, Jill. Thank you, Eileen. Well, you're someone I have known and admired for many years here at UF. When did you get involved with University of Florida? I came to UF in 1994. I started teaching as an adjunct dance faculty member at that time and also started working as an artist in residence in the Arts and Medicine program. Well, the Arts and Medicine program has accomplished so much, I mean, more than we could even talk about right now, uh, but kind of hit some of the high points because I know it me is very meaningful to um, Lucinda. Yes, because we're the academic component of arts and medicine, whereas Shands has the actual artist in residence working with the patients in the different wards. So the training takes place in our college, and then artists move out into the community for gainful employment. So it is a good partnership, yes, but very good. one that uh, College of the Arts is, is very proud of. And it's a wonderful component. I've been privileged to learn about it. And you've done so much, So, but hit some of the high points for us. <laughs> <laughs> there are many high points. Um, recently we've launched graduate level education, which we're very proud of and excited by. Um, we're also really excited these days to be moving the field into the arena of public health. Uh, we have for many years offered programs in the community. You're right. familiar with our Dance for PD program, Dance for Life, yes. uh, since 2009. Exceptional program. We enjoy that so much, and we're really excited right now to be launching a new dance program for people with multiple sclerosis. Uh, so that will be offered at a community location shortly, and that complements a really beautiful array of programs that we have in the public health domain. Uh, we've worked for the past three years as a part of the National Creative Forces Initiative, providing creative arts therapies for veterans and military oh. personnel, which is very exciting. Yes. I mean, it is, it's just every, it's so positive. And more and more people, they just need this type of assistance. And to know that the arts is bringing it is just, um, is outstanding and a wonderful feeling. Besides a feeling, through the research that Jill is doing at her center in collaboration with other doctors, um, for example at Shands, we're able to demonstrate how effective it is in patient care and how cost efficient. And it just, it's, it's all part of uh, what you, Lucinda, has 
done for your 12 years as dean and many, many of your colleagues just to merge the campus, the community, all for the betterment of everyone involved, as you're saying, for our health and to use the arts in that way. And I, it's one of the, the reasons I think we have all um, enjoyed our friendship with you for your 12 years, which will continue on because clearly, as we said in your step down reception, you are the wonder woman of the arts. And to that, your husband, Dr. Kenneth Webster, has initiated a wonderful legacy, uh, a way of, to support something dear to your heart. Will you tell us, please? Well, yes. You know, we offer tremendous training in the arts, but oftentimes when a student graduates and moves into a career, they don't have as many business skills as they need to feel comfortable or perhaps even be successful. So through the urging of our advisory boards and our alums, we've been looking at ways of integrating entrepreneurship into the curriculum. And so my husband began this fund for the business of the arts. And this fund will help us bring in guest speakers or other opportunities to help train our students so that when they move out to start their own careers, they feel as comfortable with business practices as they do their artistic practices. I think it's wonderful and we're inviting everyone to be a part of that. And again, Lucinda, um, you mean so much to this community and the UF College of the Arts. All our guests have um, made certain that they have said that to you uh, during the show. But I say, as my close friend, I hold you in high regard and your legacy will continue because you will continue to be a supporter of the arts at UF and in this community, and a good friend to all of us. And I thank you. Thank you, Eileen. And I'm so glad that you tuned in, and I hope you'll join us next week. Take care. <laughs>